Hello, this is Michael Ensor and welcome to Advertising Report Card. Today, we are gonna be doing an Advertising Report Card on fair market life. This is a life settlements company and essentially what they do is buy out life insurance policies and from there, they are able to gain profit off of the way that they manage their financial products. <clears throat> this advertising report card specifically is for the website and what needs to get done in order to iron it out, find what strengths it has and what other things that we can do to improve to make sure that before we actually conduct advertising that everything is squared away. So first, out of the gate, we're on the home page right now. We're going to check out and see exactly what this website is built with. Grab the domain. Down over to build with and just get a quick lay of the land as to what we're going to be dealing with. As you can see here, it looks like we already have Google Analytics installed, which is great. It looks like we're also on WordPress. Seems that we're using contact form seven, which is going to be a problem. We'll circle back to that later. Cookie law info, always a good thing to have nowadays to make sure that you are telling people why you cookie their website. Elementor is a great page builder, so glad that you guys have that. It's definitely something that makes building websites very easy for non-web design individual-based people. We also have a secondary forms plugin, not exactly sure why. We have some Yoast, so it looks like SEO was attempted. And then we have some other uh, basic items. One thing to notice is that we are not on an actual theme at all. It looks like we just used uh, Elementor to build this entire website and we're actually on the 2020 WordPress theme, which also can be problematic depending on how WordPress rolls out updates. Another interesting thing to notice is that with Elementor, we're also somehow combined with WP Engine typically not something you would see unless the host was managing with WP Engine or the developer of the site originally was using WP Engine, but it's definitely something that can be deprecated on the site, not needed anymore. Um, since if, the, uh, if we're hosting on our own hosting server and we have Elementor, we have our content management system, our page editor and hosting, so not quite sure why WP Engine is still in the mix. Also some basic JavaScript. Looks like we have the SSL, which is great. Make sure you always want to have an SSL. And it looks like we also are on GoDaddy, so we know where the domain registrar is, which is also very uh, easy for us to manage, which is great. So now we have a breakdown of how the site is built. What we're going to do now is just hop in the back end and take a deeper look at some of the things that we can clean up. So starting with appearance just to confirm what we have sitting inside of the website we have 2020 theme activated which is the wordpress theme it looks like kalia was installed on the website but it doesn't look like it was utilized uh, that is pretty curious because this is a premium theme that was uploaded on its own it does not come stock with wordpress installs not exactly sure why 2021 wasn't used either on the website build outs. This is built on last year's framework for the WordPress theme, could be an issue. Looks like Hello Elementor is the Elementor stock theme that they load with. Wasn't used either, kind of curious as to why this is sitting on 2020. And it might actually explain some of the other issues that we're gonna point out on the website. Another thing is that we wanna make sure what we're using for the contact form is extremely important. Seems that we're on contact form seven which contact form seven has actually been attacked and it has been pulled apart and it is no longer considered a safe form. Seems to be that form submissions through contact form seven can be hacked, information can be grabbed, is not best practices. And then also on the other side, they could uh, do a malicious attack on contact form seven using code because it's been exposed. They've updated it since, but I never recommend using a free contact form plugin to gather information um, with the privacy laws and the cookie laws in place. Uh, there's a lot of issues that you can run into legally. Um, looks like uh, we have a Kismet deactivated, um, so we don't have any spam protection, which could impact the forms as well. We have a couple other plugins that 
we ended up not using, which these two could definitely be deleted. Contact form seven, again, is the issue uh, that I wanted to highlight. What I recommend everyone use is gravity forms. It's the most comprehensive, strongest, and most well-developed contact form uh, in the WordPress ecosystem. There are other forms like formidable forms and form ninja and different types of systems, but gravity forms is by far number one. It is also the most secure and it has additional add-ons on features if need be, if you need to be HIPAA compliant, if you need to do financial applications, different types of items that are gonna keep your, your leads secure. And it's very affordable as well, um, just to buy a license for a website, 60 bucks for a year, so a little bit more than $5 a month to make sure that your contacts are uh, secure. Also, just an FYI, if you need a discount on this, let me know, I can send you a link for signing up. But as, as far as any website that I work on, I always recommend this if we're using WordPress in order to also track conversions properly. Contact Form 7 not only makes it more difficult to route email and SMS notifications when a lead comes into your team, but it's not very friendly for integration with CRMs. Uh, the list of issues goes on. Gravity Form solves all those problems. So let's hop back into plugins. As you can see, Elementor and Elementor Pro, fantastic. We have uh, the best version. It also looks like we have Everest Forms, but I don't see any evidence of Everest Forms being available anywhere on the site, so I'm not quite sure why this exists, but Gravity Forms would resolve both of those issues. Do not know why a custom footer outside of Elementor was used on this website. This looks to be another third-party developer for Vast Theme. As you know, we're not using Vast Theme, so I'm not quite sure why this is on the site, but not recommended. Also, another thing to take a look at is we have a Google Analytics plugin designed by Jeff Starr. Jeff Starr is uh, not Google affiliated. This is a third party Google Analytics tracking plugin, not recommended. If you're going to be putting tracking code on a website, the best way is to use Google Tag Manager and to add it directly to the header using either the header and footer plugin or something else similar. GDPR, always great. Want to make sure that you're being secure. Interactive Geo Maps. Uh, could, uh, could be used, could be not. I always recommend static images if you want to make something animated on your website. It looks great, but could be causing more issues than you need as far as loading speed goes. And to make sure that the experience is what people want so they can easily gather the information. Search Engine Insights. Um, looks like it adds to Google Search Council. This is another thing from a third party developer that's essentially stripping your ability to properly manage Google assets like Google Analytics, Tag Manager, and Search Council. So that needs to most likely get fixed. Um, you know, again, before I go any further, I wanted to emphasize there's a lot of ways to slice the pie. A lot of developers use different plugins, and they should because there's a lot of different things that happen with um, websites. Some plugins get deprecated. Some plugins get purchased by bigger companies and their quality goes down. It's not a bad thing to differentiate what plugins you use, but there are standards. With that being said, there are standards. There's professional standards and developer, sta developer standards. And if you are loose on those, the chances of you getting hacked or having an issue with your website are definitely a lot higher. So it's my job at Advertising Report Card to make sure that you are aware of the risk that you're partaking by either using a free plugin, a bad plugin, a plugin that's unneeded, or just leaving plugins on your website that are unnecessary. All righty. SVG file support, not exactly sure why you would want to be uploading uh, SVG files to your website. This is definitely something I'd want to get confirmation on because it doesn't seem necessary. Um, U.S. regional map can be deprecated. It looks like vast demo import. It looks like maybe at some point in time, part of this website was trying to be grabbed from another demo from a different theme, and then the theme was deprecated, and then the other theme was never activated again, so we sat on the WordPress 2020 theme instead of moving to any specific theme. I don't think that you would need to move off of the 2020 theme right now because of the way that the site's built, it's, it's functional, but in the future, understanding why your site's built a certain way is very important. Um, WP Engine automated migration, in addition to this vast demo import, it seems like this entire website was just copy and pasted from another website using different import features and migration, and then all of this 
that was unneeded was just left behind. I'm not exactly sure. This is at this point, since there's an actual Elementor plugin associated with the void um, or Vast or these different items, I would actually go back to the developer and get clarity. What's the theme that the site's supposed to be running on? And what plugins are no longer needed are two things that the original developer should be able to speak to. And then, of course, Yoast SEO. So that's pretty much the plugin breakdown. Again, big takeaway here. We could probably delete half these plugins. We'll definitely speed up the site, but we need confirmation from the developer as to what each plugin does. Do not recommend deleting things at random. Um, also, uh, we have some plugins in place that are good, and then we also need to improve some of the plugins, like the contact form plugin for Gravity Forms. So with that being said, that's essentially the entire website framework. Now let's hop in and take a look at how the site is built on the actual URLs. So there's a lot of things that we scan on a website whenever we do a scan for advertising report card. One of the main things we want to take a look at is just the pages <clears throat> and make sure that they're live. As you can see here, the status code for all the URLs that are being scanned are okay, which is great. It looks like we only have a total of nine pages that were scanned properly. I know that we have a couple more pages than that. So we're gonna take a secondary look here at something else that I found initially on my first walkthrough. Is it looks like the developer who initially created this website left a bunch of links leading out to the developer URL. So this isn't actually the website. This is WP Engine. This is where the developer created the website. They never actually updated the links on the website to make sure that they go to the, the new website once it was transferred to the main domain. And what you can see here is that uh, this link to essentially what looks like the home page of the former developer site is on a lot of different pages. And you can see that here. Here's all the URLs that this link is located on. And it's all vaulting this traffic. So we have to figure out on our end, why is this happening and where is that, where are the bad links at? Because it's not going to give you the exact answer. And if the developer of the website could again speak to this, it would make things a lot easier. But just in the essence of wanting to give an example, let's just go to the website itself and try to recreate the situation. So it says on the home page, we have a link going to the developer page. Lots of buttons here, kind of difficult to find out where the link is. Let's see if we can just find it in the source code real quick. And we'll know WP Engine. Okay. So out of the gate, what we can see here is that the actual link is located, looks to be near the top, looks to be near the navigation as well. So let's take a look here figure out where this link is. So as you can see in the bottom left corner of my screen, this get started button is actually going to the developer page. These are actually going to the new website that we are currently on. As you can see, it's HTTPS fairmarket.life. The developer page is fairmarketprod.wpengine.com. So it looks like everything in the navigation is correct except this page here that says get started. Looks like the free policy estimate as well right here goes to um, the wrong area. These don't seem to be an issue. Oh, yep, we found one right here as well, this text. Uh, just for reference, never capitalize and put in all red. Uh, an item like this, always recommend making something subtle and uh, professional or putting a button in to make it extra easy for people to understand that there's a clickable link. This is definitely considered spammy. Also on these buttons, um, just a quick content layout. It doesn't look like any of these are actually clickable, but then there's a little arrow. It's not really clear exactly what this arrow does. Should we go to this section next? Or do we click this arrow? The actual user experience here is pretty questionable. If these were meant to be clicked, there should be a button that's viewable at all times, not just when it's hovered. It's creative and it looks okay, um, but being creative and looking good isn't necessarily um, directly correlated with driving business. If you want people to activate with or engage with you through your website, you have to make it easy for them to get started to do that engagement. You don't want to make it ominous as to how they should engage with you. 
this looks good as you can see here read more these this section here definitely is a little bit more cued on with how to take an action based off of this content how it looks you know it could be a little sharper but at the same time it's simple and it gives people instruction last but not least here's another button that goes to the developer page all of these links look to be proper so what else can we find that could be considered an issue looks like the policy sellers information page has a lot of links that are going to the developer website still let's try to find them oh this one right here this goes to the developer site and this one right here goes to the developer site so yeah we definitely have a few things that would absolutely need to get cleaned up on the site um you know in addition to trying to get the developer to give us some feedback on the plugins just changing these links is going to be uh pretty straightforward something that would definitely be necessary in order to get uh to get the additional developments done uh, effectively based off of what I'm seeing in this report I would say that every single page that is live would need to be confirmed and the URL confirmed as well to make sure that you know maybe some of these things are supposed to be this way so for instance AM charts looks to be that on this page there is an AM charts link I'm wondering if that's these, this this state where you can hover over these items, which another thing I was going to mention is the name of the state would be pretty important to have over the hover. I think uh, people understanding what's licensed versus not regulated might be industry specific, but to a customer, it might not be clear. And then unfortunately, not everybody's very good at geography. So it's important that uh, you make that. And then also, I would just go ahead and list out underneath this the actual states if you want to have a status just so let's say somebody's computer doesn't load this graphic or the graphic breaks you're going to have a section here that's the states we are licensed in with the big blank space if you're going to have a visual always have some some context next to the visual don't expect people to understand what it is you're trying to convey especially if it's ominous do not be ominous on your website so one other thing I was going to mention here is this graphic looks great on desktop, how it looks on mobile. It's going to be too hard for anyone to read. So how that's designed, I would definitely recommend developing this into the actual page versus just having the graphic. The graphic will do for now, but uh, just in general. So let's try to find this AMP charts. Because I didn't see it on my first go through. AM chart. It does look like it's related to the geo map. So these third party links, it doesn't look like they're outbound, so we can't click on this and get sent to the AM chart website, but it is peculiar that they're registering as outbound links. The real solution to this, again, I think is just making a screenshot of the areas that you guys want to target or a graphic design item and then having a list of states underneath. You could always swap out from the desktop this little image and then make a mobile friendly version of it so that if someone's on a phone, it looks different or is removed entirely in favor of the list. But having the dynamic map, it looks cool. Is it something that people are gonna utilize? Um, I'm on the fence with that in, the, in its current nature. If you could click on this state and it would launch you to, um, I'm gonna assume this is Iowa, if it would want to do an Iowa form to fill out or an Iowa information page, that might make a little bit more contextual sense from the user side. But as of right now, I feel like this is kind of a, just like a fun little thing to have on the website. I don't necessarily think it connects with any of the goals. And then Google API is fine. Maps, I try not to tell people to link out to their maps, but it doesn't look like that's really an issue here. So not a big thing either on that. All right, great. So what we were able to accomplish is understanding that there are a lot of core links in this website that need to get fixed. And we found that when we indexed the site and saw that there were outbound URLs to links that aren't on our website. And that should almost never be the case unless you are purposely trying to vault people to a different website. In this instance, this was actually seems to have been an accident. 
the web developer did not finish changing the links over. When a web developer migrates a site from a developer site to the live site, they do a thing called a find replace and they find all of the developer links and replace it with the proper link. Looks like that wasn't vetted for accuracy and that's why we have this issue. So with all that being said, now let's take a look at the goals of the website. So it looks like getting started is definitely the primary. Then we have contact us here as well. And we have the free policy estimate. It looks like the free policy estimate and the getting started is effectively attempting to, to send people to the same or similar page. Things that are a little bit weird about that out of the gate is it looks like this page, the submit application page, as you can see the URLs are different. On the developer site, looks like this was created a couple times over. Um, doesn't really matter on the live site if the links are working. So with that also being said, we have a contact us page. And we have policy sellers. And if you're asking to sell your life insurance, please reach out below. And then you have the general business inquiries. I would not include an email here. Uh, I would remove this email um, because you're gonna get spammed if you have your email listed on your website. Plus, you're not gonna be able to track conversions through your website. If you have people grab an email and then go to their email client and send you an email, you're not gonna be able to track things properly. Phone number is definitely good. Only thing is the phone number is not clickable. So if someone wanted to actually make a quick call, they'd struggle to do that on their phone or on their computer if they had a click to call, which is actually a lot more popular nowadays due to um, everyone using Zoom calls. Another thing too is I would typically just take a screenshot of Google Maps on the location and put it on the website. It would make an ultra small image that takes up no memory. And this is something that a lot of people don't really use. Um, if you wanna get people directions to your location, you know, having a link like that might make sense, but you have to think about from the user's perspective what benefit just having this map has and if it being interactive is something that you need to waste space on your website for. Okay, so another thing too, let's go to policy sellers, take a look at some of the different agenda items for these pages. Are you eligible? Reasons to sell your policy. Looks like it just moves you down the page. So it looks like this is in page navigation for this entire section until we get to the pages that vault us off into the wrong area. This is actually also pretty dangerous too, because if this went live, which I think the website is live right now, and somebody clicked on this, they'd be going to a non-secure developer page where the people who own this website, the people who work at Fair Market might not even get the lead. So this is definitely something that needs to get fixed ASAP. And let's see here. Financial professionals. So one thing I wanted to emphasize here is it looks like the download sellers packet just links you directly to a PDF. What I would do in this instance, using Gravity Forms, because Contact Form 7 does not make this easy, nor is it, I don't even know if it's, you can even do this with Contact Form 7, but if somebody clicks this button, make them fill out a form name, phone number, email, and any other information you wanna gather. And once they fill that out, then send them to a page where they can download this form. If you just give the form to them, there's a lot of things that can happen that are uh, counterproductive. They might not understand how to use it. They might not know how to download it. They won't be in touch with you, so you can't help them with either of those items. And they can always take your form and then go to a competitor. Making sure that you lock in what information you're grabbing from them is very important. You don't wanna give away information without gathering at least a name and an email. All right, let's check the facts real quick. Doesn't look like we're linking out anywhere on here. 
pretty straightforward. And then we can go to the contact us page. On this page, um, I think you can just leave this as is for now. Could it be a little different? Yes, but nitpicking the contact us page when you're trying to route traffic in two different directions, you could always make this easier. For instance, it's like, are you trying to sell your policy or are you a financial advisor? Click one of these buttons and then bring them to a deeper contact page. But for the essence of keeping this simple, this works for now. I would do away with the map though. Okay, so as far as the goals go, I think that the overall confirmation here is that we want people to fill out a qualifying form but if they need to contact people they can make a phone call and then there's also a generic form as well um, using the contact page to direct people deeper into your business is helpful but adding extra steps doesn't necessarily help either so it's kind of a look and see what the data does on the website with google analytics to see what changes you could make and then track the changes thereafter so in the conversion review what we're going to do and on the contact us page this form is definitely on the main website this form is definitely not my test test delete i'm gonna put my number in here age i don't even want to tell y'all so i'm gonna be 21 because i'm too old policy amount let's just make it uh, one with a bunch of zeros and then Let's do whole life because that's the point of what we're trying to accomplish. And now we're processing. So this is the thank you page that was uh, what we were redirected to once we filled out the form here. Well, sounds good. So now let's go to policy sellers and do the same thing here. One thing I'd like to mention on this form is that they don't ask for email definitely a little odd especially on a contact form but email is a standard so definitely go go ahead and create that feel on our form subject test delete seeing what happens when a form is sent submit So as you can see here, we get another generic thank you message. We still have a form over here. The experience is confusing. Con sorry, confusing. If you fill out a form, you should be redirected to a thank you page that says, this is what you did. This is what you can expect. Here's some things that you can do. Right now, it just sends the confirmation uh, message, which also is not 100% trackable with Google Analytics. You can track anything that gets clicked or submitted or called, but if the tracking code doesn't properly fire can be an issue. The best way to have a good tracking code fire is to have a URL, submit the form, go to another URL that's specific to track, and then once this page loads, you know that form was submitted. If a form was submitted but the content was bad or it wasn't properly sent or the form essentially just didn't work, you could still track that conversion without actually getting the lead information. Contact Form 7 is notorious for this issue. Gravity Forms definitely would solve the issue there on that form. Not to uh, cheerlead for Gravity Forms, but I personally use them and recommend them and have done so on hundreds of sites. Highly recommend you do the same. The issues that you can have with contact forms can kill business and hurt opportunity. All right. So we know what happens now with that. Why not give a little phone call and see what happens here? One moment. Eight three three six three zero oh, five four three three. Thank you for calling Fair Market Life Settle. Come on, you got an answer. Answer for me. I'm ready to sell my life policy. 
please. Please. It's always good to do a test like this. Even if you own a website and you have a team or a front desk person, fill out the form, call them, see how long it takes for them to call you back. If you think that they're gonna know who you are, create a new Gmail and make a Google voice phone number and do the same thing I'm doing right now. Test your team, test your process. Sometimes it's not just about advertising or having the best looking website. Sometimes it's just being available to get to the phone. Now, there is a chance that they saw it was my number and didn't answer because of that, but not likely. So with that being said, um, you know, our conversion process, we don't know what happens when the form gets submitted, but we do know what we need to improve. Following up with the client and seeing if they got both form submissions is extremely important because they're on different uh, form fields. So the last but not least, on the pages, this is just on the WordPress side. It looks like the Elementor pages were properly built. Looks like we have some pages that were meant to be built that just never were. I would make sure to delete these pages. If you want to do content driven pages, I would recommend doing them underneath post and creating your blog. But if you just want landing pages that are just strict content, you can also create a page for them. But if it's an Elementor, make sure you're using Elementor. Another thing too, is it looks like we have multiple privacy policies. This is something that you don't want your web developer doing without you giving explicit direction on what to do. Um, I would personally make sure that if you have a terms of service, that you have it on one page and that the entire website links to it. I'm not quite sure what the terms of privacy is, but making sure that you get the right content up, oh, looks like this wasn't done, so it can be deleted probably. Privacy policy here as well. So there are two privacy po policies. Actually, it looks like terms of use, privacy policy, there's three. So we have a few things here we definitely wanna clean up on the actual customer side. Um, this is where the important feedback really comes into play. This is the advertising report card for the website. The recommendations that need to get done on this would effectively make it a better website. But to say that all these things need to get done immediately, it's honestly subjective. If you wanted to launch an advertising campaign at this website in its current state, you have a phone call uh, ability and you have a form ability for people to reach out to you. But is that developer site where you want to send people? Definitely not. So we want to send all people to the to this website. But what page do we send them to? We have request a quote in Elementor right here. But this page doesn't seem to be attached to this company. It almost looks like the person who built this website, uh, this is their form. And to speak to that as well, I'm gonna take a wild guess here. No, it looks like it's contact form seven, so. It's on contact form seven. So as you can see here, we have issues with styling and the form itself doesn't look so hot. It's just not what I would recommend, but we also need to figure out, okay, so this is submit application. This is the name of the page that everyone, I mean, all these other buttons have been linking to. So this looks to be the proper page. So what we're gonna do here is Mike, Mike test three, delete after confirm, seven, seven, two, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, one, four, mail. I'm not that old, lots of zeros, whole life, submit. So now at least we'll have a submission from the developer site, from the contact page, and then also the proper application page on the main website. This is a good sign that it's here. It means that part of it was built out, but just getting final confirmation on what pages need to be on the website and what can be removed is important. Um, I'm a stickler for not having anything on the website that is not needed to be there. Not a single plugin, not a single page. 
all websites are vulnerable to attack when it comes to hack and software is what the, there's no hacker in the basement anymore hacking it's the guy running the script hitting a million websites a day looking for that vulnerability and when they find it they exercise it and you will barely know that anything's wrong uh, but things can happen uh, very very drastically in that situation so make sure that you get with your team internally and go through every single page on your website and say do we need this do we not very important do not leave that up to a contractor to determine you might lose a crucial page you need to be able to take enough ownership on the content of your site to make sure you know what is supposed to be on there and what is not and then also the plugins if you don't know what plugins should or should not be on the website get with the person who built the website if you need a new developer to go through you can but it's always important to try to get reference as to why things were a certain way so what do you do now you have your advertiser report card and you have a breakdown of what you need to do on the website. There's three things that you can do. One is you can take the information from this video and do the work on your own because it's guided enough to at least, if you go back and rewind it and watch through again, step by step, what needs to be identified. And if you don't know, then that's when you can start making the list of things that you might need some more help with, which I'm happy to help with uh, if you want to do a follow up call in this video or any report card for that matter. The second option you have is to go back to your developer with this video, show them the issues and make sure that they fix these issues. And the caveat to that is have them make a video just like this and say, hey, these are the issues that are identified. This is the fixes that we did and you should be good to go. Uh, the third option is we could take care of this for you. So just let us know if you want us to hop in and make these fixes on the fly, we can get that done very quickly for you and we'll figure out how many hours it'll take for development on the website to get that done for you. Again, this is Michael Ensor. This is Advertising Report Card. I hope that this was beneficial and revealing, and I look forward to working with you guys on making sure that fairmarket.life is the best website that it can be. Talk to you guys soon.